While in an educational setting, an intriguing question surfaced. What is consciousness? This question, seemingly simple, yet immensely profound, sparked an intense discussion, teeming with uncertainty. This led to another major question toward the end of this video, which you can shed light on. It was as if we had opened Pandora's box, and a multitude of different perspectives came pouring out, each one as unique as the individual who presented it. Scientists, we were told, with their analytical minds, admitted that even they couldn't provide a universally accepted definition. Some suggested consciousness is about awareness, others claimed it's the ability to feel and perceive, while a few ventured it might be the product of complex brain processes. Philosophers, on the other hand, took a more existential approach, proposing that consciousness is the essence of our being, the very fabric of our existence. Amid the flurry of these contrasting views, a thought began to take shape in my mind. Consciousness involved time. I explained that I did not know how to fit it in, but it seemed to make sense. It was a quiet yet persistent idea, a gently intrusive thought that lingered. That night my thought completed itself. It seemed to me that consciousness was intricately connected with three things. Life, choice and time. By life, I mean the simple fact of our existence as living, breathing entities. Choice refers to our innate ability to make decisions, to choose one path over another. And time, well, time means being present, existing in the here and now. This idea resonated with me. I found myself drawing from the biblical narrative of creation, where God breathed life into man, and man became a living soul. Man became a conscious being, man became alive, man had a choice, man was present in time. It was this life, choice and presence in time that man did not handle with wisdom. In my mere human thought, I considered that these three components could find a place with each member of the Godhead. Life may be associated with the Father who breathed breath into man. Choice may be coupled with Jesus who made the decision to die in our place. And the Holy Spirit could represent time as he's here and now with us. Perhaps life is possible without choice, but that would be a miserable existence. Can life happen without time? Do we exist if we are not present in the here and now? Without life, choice or time, are we actually conscious? As I harbored the thought, my conclusions seemed to resonate, despite our earlier collective struggle to define consciousness. Science provides us with a plethora of theories, yet a consensus on what consciousness is remains elusive. Let's dive into the scientific realm where, much like a bustling marketplace, theories of consciousness abound. On one hand, we have the quantum theory of consciousness, which suggests that our minds are not merely the product of brain processes, but are also influenced by the quantum mechanics of the universe. This theory, while intriguing, is still a subject of intense debate and speculation. On another hand, there's the integrated information theory, which posits that consciousness is a byproduct of the brain's ability to process and integrate information. According to this theory, the more integrated and complex a system is, the higher the level of consciousness it possesses. It's a fascinating concept, though it's not without its critics. Then we have the global workspace theory, which likens the brain to a theater. In this grand performance, consciousness is the spotlight, illuminating specific mental contents in the vast darkness of the unconscious mind. It's a compelling metaphor, yet it's far from being universally accepted. In the midst of these theories, there's also the intriguing notion of panpsychism. This perspective suggests that consciousness is not exclusive to humans or even animals, but is a fundamental property of all matter, including atoms and particles. It's a radical idea that may challenge the conventional understanding of consciousness of some. But let's not forget about neurobiology, which attempts to map consciousness to specific brain structures and processes. Despite the impressive strides made in this field, it has yet to provide a comprehensive explanation for the phenomenon of consciousness. The scientific community is a vibrant tapestry of divergent views, each contributing a different understanding of consciousness. Yet it's evident that there's no unified theory that everyone agrees upon. It's a testament to the profound complexity of consciousness. It appears, no matter how much we delve into the science, the mystery of consciousness remains. In the biblical narrative, consciousness comes alive with the breath of life. Rather than a complex neurological process, it's presented as a divine gift, an intimate act of creation, where God breathed life into the first man, Adam. 
From this perspective, consciousness is more than just a physical phenomenon. It becomes a spiritual one, a sacred link between the Creator and His creation. The story of Genesis where God breathed life into man profoundly suggests consciousness is not merely an outcome of biological evolution or a byproduct of brain chemistry. Instead, it's a spark of divine essence, a touch of God's own spirit. So when we talk about consciousness, we are talking about something that is deeply connected to the very essence of life itself. This perspective of consciousness as a divine gift also brings a unique understanding of our ability to make choices. If consciousness was breathed into us by God, then our ability to make decisions to discern right from wrong is also from Him. Our choices are not just products of our brains, but expressions of our spirit, our soul. Existing in the present, the third element of consciousness, takes on a new meaning as well. If consciousness is a divine gift, then every moment of awareness, every now, is a moment of communion with God, even when rejected by some. Being fully present becomes a spiritual act, a way of honoring the divine spark within us. This perspective of consciousness, as life, choice and time, offers a rich biblical understanding. It ties together our physical existence with our spiritual essence, our biological processes with our moral decisions, our fleeting moments with eternal truths. However, as profound and as beautiful as this perspective is, it is still one perspective among many. It opens up new questions, new paths of inquiry and new ways of understanding ourselves. This perspective brings a unique dimension to our understanding of consciousness, yet the question remains. Life, choice, time, could these be the three pillars of consciousness? Let's delve deeper into this personal revelation. Life in the context of consciousness signifies our existence as living, breathing entities. It's the spark, the vitality that animates us. It's the very essence that separates a stone from a human. Life forms the bedrock of consciousness, for without life, consciousness as we perceive it could not exist. Next, we have choice. This alludes to our ability to make decisions, to discern between different paths and opt for one over the other. It's the freedom that we exercise, the autonomy we hold over our actions. It's the ability to say yes or no, to choose this over that. But it's not just about the big decisions, even the smallest choices like deciding to take a deep breath or to blink your eyes contribute to our consciousness. Our choices in essence are expressions of our consciousness in action, then we come to time. Time is the canvas upon which life and choice are painted. It's the ever-flowing river that carries us from one moment of consciousness to the next. We exist in the present, constantly transitioning from the past into the future. Our consciousness, too, is rooted in this present moment. It's in the here and now that we live, make choices and experience our existence. So life gives us the ability to be, choice provides us the power to act, and time offers us the platform to exist. These three components interweave to create the complex tapestry of consciousness. They form a triad, each one contributing to our understanding of what it means to be conscious. Yet, even as we unravel these components, we must remember that consciousness is a vast, uncharted territory. It's a mystery that continues to intrigue and perplex some. These components seem to offer a more comprehensive understanding of consciousness. Yet is this the complete picture? It is Consciousness remains one of the most intriguing and enigmatic aspects of our existence. As we've journeyed through this exploration, we've grappled with the question of what is consciousness from the perspectives of science, philosophy and biblical teachings. Scientists, while they've made significant strides, still have not reached a consensus. Consciousness is not a simple singular concept, it's a complex multifaceted construct that intertwines with our very essence. It's the spark that makes us aware the guiding compass that navigates us through the labyrinth of choices and decisions we make throughout our lifetime. From the biblical perspective, we've considered the moment when God breathed life into man, marking the dawn of consciousness. This divine act, an allusion to the inception of life, choice and time, presents an intriguing perspective on our understanding of consciousness. It's a reminder of our living, breathing existence, our capacity to make decisions and our presence in the here and now. We've also delved into the components of consciousness, life, choice and time. As living entities we are conscious. Our ability to make choices, to decide, to act and react stems from our consciousness. And time, our existence in the present, is a testament to our consciousness. The enigma of consciousness is an ongoing journey of discovery, understanding and interpretation. 
It's a discussion filled with uncertainty, debate and constant development. The second major question that came out of that discussion mentioned at the beginning of this video was, is AI conscious or can AI become conscious? Based on your understanding of consciousness, is it, can it? As we continue to explore and understand, remember this, consciousness in its enigma may just be the key to understanding our very existence.